Hello and welcome to Barkland Labs. Today we are learning about how to do a soda distillation. Uh, so you're going to start off by opening your, up yourself a nice refreshing. And you'll have an option of a strawberry, an orange, or a grape flavor. And it's a good idea to always measure your volumes on a level surface. Um, in me practicing right now, I'm trying to decide if I want you guys to do 100 or 200 milliliters. Last year we did 100. Um, I'm going to try 200 milliliters and I'll let you know next week which one we are going to end up doing in our lab. So, obviously you don't want to level measure the carbonation level. You want to measure the actual um, volume of soda level. That gets, brings us to, oops, a little bit over over so I'm going to um, pour a little bit back. Uh, one thing I ask in this lab is just to be careful to rinse everything off whether it's a graduated cylinder or a funnel or tabletops. Uh, soda gets kind of sticky and gross if it gets left places so please do me that favor. Um, so I'm going to add my first first amount in there and then I will like I said with you guys, I'm going to do a 200 milliliters. Uh, so let me talk a little bit about distillations. Um, we've been talking about physical versus chemical properties and changes recently. Um, one physical property is boiling point of a substance. Um, and you can separate substances based off of different boiling points. Uh, there are actually four different substances in a soda that we want to separate by distillation. Um, sometimes this is called a fractional distillation. Uh, fraction just means breaking down into smaller parts. Uh, so we are fractionally distilling four components here. I'm almost there. Okay, the first one, uh, the first component is something called a fruity ester. And that's kind of a funny sounding name. Uh, it's not how Esther Goldberg spells her name. Take the H out of her name and that is how you spell ester. And uh, that's what gives the, that's one of the, the chemical components that gives um, the strawberry refreshy. It's that, that nice strawberry flavor that's actually not strawberry at all. It's just um, a chemical they found that um, smell, tastes vaguely sweet. And then you give it this nice red dye color and then you know that um, then your brain is kind of tricked into thinking it's strawberry, but it's not actually strawberry. So the fruity ester is the first uh, component that we want to boil off of here. Uh, the second is uh, something called... Uh, carbon dioxide, we've talked a lot about that, um, and we're going to detect the carbon dioxide with this blue liquid um, called bromothymol blue. I will get into that a little bit more. Um, and then the third is water. Uh, we know the boiling point of water is 100 degrees Celsius at, at sea level. Um, here in Denver, it's a little bit lower. Move the table back here as I'm talking. Um, and I'm going to get this uh, light lit actually while we are. Uh, while I'm continuing to talk here. Uh, fourth component that we're not going to get rid of is the sugar. Um, so we'll get to that, well, what we're going to do with the sugar in a bit. So I just lit my Bunsen burner over here. And you want to get your flame uh, so that it's uh, maybe kind of close to the close to that Erlenmeyer flask, but you don't actually want it um, go enveloping and going around the Erlenmeyer flask. Uh, so while that's working, I'm going to hook up my my thermometer and my uh, tubing here. I'm going to move you closer. Sorry for all the rearranging here. And while this is happening, really good idea to have your thermometer on. Um, one of the things you're going to be measuring throughout this lab is what temperature you notice different things happen at. Uh, what uh, different things to be to separate at. So right now I'm at 22 degrees Celsius not warm at all and we want to start smelling uh, by wafting to see when that fruity ester boils off or comes off the solution. Um, I think I mentioned in all the classes uh, this, this week that um, uh, one student hurt themselves because and what they did is they basically put this kind of right up to their nose and they were waiting uh, to try to smell the fruity ester. They actually passed the point at which the ester came off and all of a sudden steam started coming out of here and it, she basically um, inhaled some of the steam into her nose. As you can imagine that hurt, hurt kind of bad and it kind of um, made her not able to smell very well and her nose was sore for a few days. So not permanent damage but not a pleasant experience. So, once again, you are wafting 
and this will take us kind of a, kind of a while, um, so I'm going to keep on talking as we are wafting. Uh, a couple of things you uh, should be aware of as well. Uh, we've got our ice bath over here, and compared to our soda can crush, you actually want a lot of ice in here, and you're going to have to monitor uh, the amount of ice because we are using the ice to kind of continuously uh, condense and cool our uh, our reaction. So you might have to at some point send your partner up, or you go up and get some more ice uh, to replace the. Um, the ice that has melted in the course of this experiment. I'm at 28.6 degrees Celsius now. Um, so once again, you're just, you are wafting away. I'm not going to tell the exact temperature that I smell the fruity ester at because that's going to be kind of giving away the uh, one of the purposes of the experiment. But um, it, I will tell you it's a relatively low temperature. Um, esters are pretty finicky little molecules. They don't uh, they don't like to stick around that much in the in the liquid. They will boil off pretty quickly. So don't smell it quite yet. Um, after you smell it, I'll, I'll start talking about the bromothymol blue here. After you smell it, you're going to place your um, reaction into the bromothymol blue, and you're going to wait to see uh, bubbles of carbon dioxide. I'll tell you how we'll know, how we know that the car carbon dioxide is coming out up at that point, but you're going to want to go kind of quickly because it's a, it'll be a relatively quick transition between the temperature that the, that the ester boils off at and the carbon dioxide boils off at. So you can see some, if you watch carefully, you can see a few of the bubbles coming out of there right now. Um, those are likely um, dissolved oxygen bubbles that were in the soda. Um, probably a few bubbles of carbon dioxide, I'm, I'm assuming, as well, but um, you don't need to put that in here yet. So you're just waiting. Um, one of the things about this lab is you need to be a little, be a little bit patient. It's going to take a while, and there's going to be some downtime, and that's fine. That's, that happens in science. Sometimes it takes us a long time to run our reactions. What I'm going to have you do at that point is uh, be quizzing your partners on chemical symbols. Um, I'm going to give you a list of those next week, the chemical symbols that I want you to memorize over the next few weeks. Uh, those are things like copper, which is Cu, doesn't make sense. Um, potassium is K, sodium is Na, uh, gold is Au, silver is Ag. I'm saying a lot of the really weird, funky ones. Mercury is Hg. Um, some of the ones that are kind of similar that get mixed up a lot would be something like manganese and, and magnesium. Manganese is Mn, magnesium is Mg. Uh, my, my general philosophy is that I don't have you memorize tons of just cold hard facts because uh, you can always Google things, but um, you, an area you can make a lot of mistakes with um, is if you just don't know that manganese is Mn and magnesium is Mg, you see Mg and your brain thinks, oh, that's manganese, you made a mistake and you never knew that you needed to Google um, that, that answer. So I guess what I'm trying to say is uh, there's not a ton of things that I'm having you memorize, things like formulas, because you can always look those up or uh, you know, look up the, you know, the, the acceleration due to gravity. That's not, it's not something I care about memorizing so much because you can always look it up, but you could make a lot of mistakes in chemistry if you don't know the, some of those uh, atomic symbols. Uh, we're at 40, uh, I'm not going to tell you exactly where we are. I should start smelling that fruity ester pretty soon here. I'm actually surprised that I have not smelled it yet. It should be kind of any any moment. And one of the problems with this lab is um, since you're all doing this in the same room, you might start smelling somebody else's reaction. So hopefully you can tell the difference between somebody else's refreshy giving off lovely strawberry vapors across the room and your refreshy giving off nice smells. I'm going to turn up the... Turn up the oxygen a bit here for us. See if I can get this reaction going a little bit faster. Because it is Friday afternoon and Mr. Barkland wants to go home. Okay. And okay, right now I just smelled a very, very strong, distinctive strawberry smell. That that means that that is. My fruity ester is, uh, is boiling off, so I'm going to go ahead and look over here at my, at my thermometer. You, hopefully your partner 
is watching and I, I can write down what temperature it was that that just happened at. I'll turn my guess a little bit down now actually. And then that's when you put your, uh, put your reaction into the bromothymol blue. Um, so once again, bromothymol blue is an indicator solution. Uh, what an indicator solution is, um, it's something that changes color uh, when it experiences a pH change. That's the change in acidity or basicity. Uh, if you're watching this carefully, you might notice that right now it is experiencing that color change. It's going from a blue color to kind of a, uh, right now, seafoam green is what I'd maybe call that. Um, and eventually it will go all the way to a yellow color. The reason it's doing that is the carbon dioxide bubbles that are, that are being boiled off of here right now um, are being dissolved in this water, some of them are, uh, they become something called carbonic acid that makes the water more acidic and that makes that indicator solution, the bromothymol blue, turn yellow. Uh, so it's just a kind of fancy little way to tell uh, when you've got carbon dioxide boiling off. Uh, you may have heard of, of carbonic acid before in the context of ocean, the oceans and ocean acidification. When we get more carbon dioxide in our atmosphere, some of it gets absorbed by the oceans. That makes our oceans slightly more acidic, and that can be bad for crustaceans and all kinds of organisms that have shells made out of um, calcium carbonate, uh, things like uh, coral reefs, because it actually will start to dissolve them a little bit and make them weaker. So after you write down that temperature that you saw the carbon dioxide boiling at, now you're going to transfer it to your test tube. Um, and ideally your test tube has a nice little L-hook kind of uh, thing on this side um, so you can kind of hang it off the side of your of your reaction like that um, and you want to make sure as much of that test tube is submerged as possible and um, kind of at all times because uh, what's going to start happening here is the water vapor is uh, you'll notice you can maybe see is starting to boil from this soda it's traveling down this tubing here um, and into the uh, into the test tube and our goal what we want to have happen is we want when that vapor the steam hits this this area we want it to kind of get shocked uh, by how cold it is back into the uh, experience phase change uh, condensation remember we talked about that last month um, back into liquid water and we'll be able to collect that liquid water in this test tube so you want to keep it in some submerged here and you want to keep a good amount of ice in there remember that ice will start getting used up uh, one thing to be really really careful about um, this tubing here is uh, kind of nice and short depending on uh, what apparatus you get, it, you'll have kind of a different length of tubing. You want to be really careful not to let this tubing hit uh, the mesh, the wire mesh over there. Uh, it'll melt a hole through that tubing and then your experiment's not going to work anymore because the steam is just going to be leaving um, out through that tubing. Um, so I'm keeping an eye on my temperature. We're at about uh, 91 degrees, 91.4. We're at a pretty vigorous boil here now. It should, um, it should reach Know, somewhere in our mid to high 90s and level off at that point that tells me that we are boiling the water which means we should be collecting water our third component in this test tube a um, couple things to watch for here I, I grabbed um, our Erlenmeyer flask from last year oops there we go Erlenmeyer from last year last year and our uh, thermometer setup from last year uh, notice this is the bottom of the th of the thermometer. Um, it actually, the, the bottom of the bulb is completely gone. Uh, this is from the group that uh, wasn't paying attention to their reaction as it was boiling, and they boiled off all their water, and they totally fried the thermometer, um, burnt the bottom off, and caramelized all that sugar in the bottom. Basically, made it this just solid sheet of sugar that started burning. Then, um, so that was uh, that was not so great. Um, so we've got a nice boil going on here. I would turn the gas down at this point because uh, you don't want the, the boil to be so vigorous that the liquid is um, is really splashing up there. This is this is a great boil that we got going on here right now. Um, and I'm going to take a peek at our test tube, and what do you know? We've got some water collecting down there. Um, that water should once again it's our third component, and um, our goal now is to get all the water from here collected in here. Um, you're going to have to have another uh, t uh, beaker set aside to empty this out occasionally. This is a pretty good sized test tube, but it's not going to be able to hold all the water that you need. Um, one thing to be really careful with, um, at the very, uh, sorry, I'm, I know I'm telling you a lot of things to be careful with. Um, 
You really don't want to uh, submerge your test tube at all because then you can get um, you can actually or, yeah you don't want to submerge the test tube. And then once you turn this experiment off, so I'm going to turn this off prematurely. Once that's off, you really want to be careful to uh, disconnect disconnect this and not put it into the um, into your ice bath. I've had uh, one or two people do that every year I've done this lab um, and what's actually going to happen is as this gas is cooling down on here it's going to condense and take up less space. It'll create a vacuum effect. You can already maybe see um, some of the water traveling back up this tubing. Um, so it's fine for a little bit of that water to travel back up that tubing, but guess what? If you put it in here, all of a sudden it's going to start sucking all of the water out of the ice bath. It's going to create a siphon, and it's going to start traveling into that um, into that Erlenmeyer. So I had, like I said, a couple groups every year that had a nice, beautiful distillation. They had just their sugar left, um, and then they stuck this in here, and it sucked a whole bunch of water all the way up to the top of the Erlenmeyer flask in there. So don't put it back in there. Uh, the point you're looking for is um, when you're watching your thermometer, you're looking for when your thermometer starts to go above the uh, boiling point of water, so above that 95 to 100 degrees Celsius. Once it goes above that, you know that you're not boiling water anymore. You're pretty much done with water, and now you're starting to boil that sugar. That's the point where you want to turn that off, and I'm going to have you uh, try to harvest that sugar actually by pouring it into another container. Uh, we'll let that cool and see what happens with that um, next the week after when we come back. Uh, but that's basically what a distillation is, is separating uh, components of a liquid into their uh, various parts based on different boiling points. I hope you have a great week.